Today on Flying Fishing and Food, we head to Swansburg, North Carolina and fish with Jeff Cronk. He's one of the most popular guides in Eastern North Carolina. Today we're targeting red drum, black drum, and sheep's head. We're starting out at the swing bridge. It's a part of the Camp Lejeune Marine Base. It's got a lot of pylons and the fish love hanging around the pylons and eating crustaceans. Bring those 12 pound flounder that we gotta let go. Right. <laughs> oh, it's a foul hook fish. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stingray? Ha <laughs> ha. Foul hook stingray. Not foul hook, but swimming funny. Look at that. Very foul either way. Listen, and how to throw a cast net. <laughs> Something that is, a, is definitely a learned skill. I wanted to hit that school in the head and I didn't get a chance to. Well, yeah. <laughs> Seagulls trying to scare them off. Nice cast. There you go. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you sneaking up on them? We didn't have much luck over the swing bridge fishing for gray trout, so we decided to get some fiddler crabs and head over to the Swansburg Bridge and see what we could do there. So what's the strategy with sheep's head? Hook them. Bring them in. <laughs> Fish as close to the pylons as you can. The sheep's head feed on barnacles that grow on the pylons from the bridge. So you have to be real close to the pylons to be able to attract their attention. We caught a couple of sheep's head, but they were pretty small, so we decided to go out and target some reds in the back bay. Right. 
pray the drum don't blow out like that. So what do you look for when you're looking for red drum? What, what, are, you, what are you looking no for out here? No wind and clear water and and then we can see headwater. If there's no wind in here today, we find these fish in five minutes. We'll be able to see headwater from 100 yards away. Well, the fish are pushing the water is what you're saying? Yeah. Type of structure or anywhere in the bay. They could be anywhere. I mean, anywhere. you know, you got to kind of know where the potholes are at right off the end of rocks and stuff like that. That's helpful, right? To know that. But they could be on top of a eight-inch deep flat. They could right. be in a little three-foot hole off the end of an oyster bed. You know, the good thing is when the tide drops out, a lot of it comes out of water, and they tend to go to little nooks and crannies off the end of the rocks, which are the deeper, deeper places. Yeah, but when the wind's blowing. Unless they blow out on us and we see them, you know, they could be on one end of a rock, you're going down the back side of it, you move to the other end. They went to the previous side, you never saw them, and there could be hundreds of fish there, you know. They could be, they move in unison and kind of sneak around. Right. That's the tough part about it. That's why guys are so valuable, you kind of know in the of these areas. Well, that's the key, is getting back to these places after that. You can spend hours in here on a trolling motor looking for a school. Seven inch fish out there. That last fish and this one would win the tournament. That's over 14 pounds right here. Nice. Good. Good. It's a nice red drum. Oh, he's right. He's max. He's 26 and a half is what he is. I'm gonna tell you though, you throw it right in their mouth about twice at least. I'm just changing angles, you both. That's what's so wonderful. They're not going to feed hard. They're not chasing stuff down. As long as you're not catching crabs, heavy crabs and cats, as long as you can. They could move, they could move up the bay, they could move that way. So you take one shot right there, turn and take your next shot. Get it down that way right there. You kind of go back and forth with it. I can probably two cast it and get one over here, so I'll throw right to that stake. Throw it to the stake or that boat. Alright. Wow. I'm gonna switch 
both sides. Go over the top of him. No, nope, you this side, this side. Come around here, let him under you. Oh, this fish is to the right there. There you go. Told you something thumped it. <laughs> Actually, I was staring him in the eyes. <laughs> I wish I was. You're good. No, we lucked out today. I told you the other day that between those two oyster beds, but the tides really receded out, so hopefully they dropped out from this deep water. Once we found the school of redfish, it was easy. All we had to do was just cast over into that group, and we were getting hits. It goes that way, you possibly bet. Right now, there you go. 27 inch. That's a 26 and a half inch. The tournament will be over. Next over weekend. then. Next weekend's the tournament. I'll be right here if you fish that here. Deep in a gulp. There he is. Boom, gold already. <laughs> there they are. They're on that sail. Come to the back of the boat back here. Come on back here. One of y'all come back here. We're going to take this one. All right, now if you get him up, bite him. Uh -huh. Stand on that back corner. All right. Work him. Put him up from there. So we ate the pop pork really good there. That popping cork, you know, it simulates, that thing simulates a dip right on the corner of that rock. That popping cork simulates a, you know, redfish destroying a bait anyway. And then they get over to it, and there's a damn shrimp floating under it, you know, they're like, hmm. So that being the case, the popping cork creek might be the better one to go to, since the water clarity is not that great. So if you'll just point it this way, I'm going to tie you one on real quick. You got, I think you got an overslot there. That's a big fish. He's still burning a lot down. You can tight drag a little bit, but not a whole lot. We brought in about seven redfish that were right in the slot. Right. We can only keep two, one per person. We were doing well. We could have probably caught fish all day. Then a small skiff of clamors came in and scared Bring all in, the brother. fish away. These guys know these waters. I would never run at the speed Jeff was running as we came out of the backwaters. There's sandbars and oyster beds everywhere and unless you know these waters really well you're gonna run aground. I was still bracing and holding on tight. You never know what changes down here at the coast. We fished it anyway. Is it cronk or cronk? Yeah, it's cronk. Like cronk. Like yeah. Walter Cronk height. Yeah. yeah. So we fished today with Jeff Cronk. Um, we went out and um, found some red drum and found a few sheep's head. So tell us a little bit about your guide business down here. Um, been running fishing for life charters for about 20 years. Um, pretty much target, you know, summertime and fall. You don't have to go far from Swansboro. Right. You should leave out of Dudley's every day. Here and there, we launch out of the city, fish more in city's backwaters. As we move into the fall, early spring, like that, in March and April time frame. And then again in the late fall, right before winter, you know, October, November, we move off into like the Noose River somewhat. Um, it's those, those trout that are staging up there, we're coming out from the stage. And then, um, you know, from the time really late April and early May hits, we're here. There's no need to go anywhere. We have the Albacore and Bonita run in April and May, um, and right behind them, show up the, the Spanish and the Kings throughout the summer. And a lot of times we're catching good, you know, mahi and stuff too, from here short. Sure, we haven't seen much for it. And, and, shore and, all shore shore. and then the backwaters here, you know, um, I know our flounders shut down until, you know, until the fall, but um, we're not really targeting them so much. We catch them, just catch release when we catch those, but we're targeting black drum and red drum and sheep's head and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and then a few trout around here, but if I have folks that want trout in the summertime, I just send it to my buddies, Ricky Kellum, you know, or else my, my guy, my friends that um, guy like Ashley King and stuff up. Uh, okay. uh, unless I've got clients that just want to go with us and then Thank you.
We're headed down to Moorhead to meet some friends at a place called Jack's. Jack's Waterfront Bar. Jack's used to be just a bar and now they've added a second floor and they have food. So we're going to check it out. Jack's has a good assortment of pizzas, sandwiches, salads, wings, just good old bar food. Everything we had was excellent. And the view's not too bad either. We head back after having a great dinner with family and friends. A great day on the water, a great day of fishing. We'll definitely be doing it again. I want to thank Jeff Cronk, our guide. He did an excellent job. We did well with fishing. And Jimmy Wilder, one of my good friends that's fished with me a lot. Until next time, please join us on Flying, Fishing, and Food.